For many years, the renowned comic Watchmen by Alan Moore was considered unfilmable, and critics claimed that any director to attempt a movie adaptation would surely fail. In the 90s and early 2000s, there were multiple attempts to bring Watchmen to the big screen, but each fell short because the comic was simply too detailed, too long, and too iconic, with moments that would not translate well into a movie. However, Matthew McAllister claims that film based on innovative comics will often stretch the generally agreed upon boundaries in an attempt to mimic the source material more closely. This is exactly what happened when, in 2009, Zack Snyder and 20th Century Fox released a film adaptation that holds an extremely high fidelity to its printed counterpart. The affordances given to this movie were radically different from those of the comic. While the comic form is able to use fast transitions between scenes and a layout that transcends a single dimensional timeline, movies have the ability to utilize more relatable images that move in the same way we perceive life. Today we will be analyzing how the comic Watchmen and its 2009 movie adaptation each use their given affordances specifically delving into how they address the passage of time and the relevant intentions of Moore and Snyder. In the very first scene of the movie, we see how the different affordances of the two mediums affect the delivery of the scene. In the movie, the entirety of the comedian's fight and death are shown as one continuous segment. However, in the comic, the panels switch back and forth from the comedian to the detectives investigating his death. This rapid switch between scenes can be more easily accomplished in the comic form, as the readers can quickly look back at past panels to remind themselves what's happened should they get lost. Faster scene changes are also expected in comics because we subconsciously slow our reading during fast-paced action scenes to absorb the details. Snyder's attempt to stay true to the comic form of Watchmen is expressed in Anja Dalianis' analysis of the scene, which states that Snyder's jump between slow motion and sped-up action mimic the unpredictable progress of a reader's focus across the comic panels. While the movie does utilize jumps between slow and fast motion, many fast-paced scene transitions would make the viewer confused and even nauseous. Therefore, the director opted for two separate scenes in contrast to the mixed pages we see here in the comic. Unforgettable That's what you are Unforgettable As we'll see in this scene, however, the movie is able to easily mimic the comic despite their different affordances. Take note of the quick scene transitions, which are not overwhelming to the viewer, since the dialogue from Dr. Manhattan's interview continues over the fight scene, which has dampened audio. Because Snyder used the comic as a basic storyboard for the movie, much of the film, similar to this scene, remains relatively faithful to the comics. Cancer. You're suggesting I was the cause. From where I'm standing, it's starting to look pretty conclusive. Even if that's the case, it's irrelevant. A live human body and a deceased human body have the same number of particles. Structurally, there's no difference. All right, let's settle down, please. Now we'll be delving into the origin of Dr. Manhattan in the comic and film. With the two different portrayals of his origin story, the different intentions of Moore and Snyder become clear. As you can see, the movie spends much more time focusing on the life of John, trying to get the audience to relate to him and show the depth of his human emotions. Her name is Janie Slater. She is a physicist, like me. I am 30 years old. We were introduced by a good friend of mine from college, Wally Weaver. It is February 12th, 1981. Wally dies of cancer, of which they now say I am the cause. Here in the comic, we can see that there are only four panels about John outside of his work. The author really isn't interested in the reader developing an emotional connection with John. However, the comic spends more time exploring Dr. Manhattan after his reincarnation. There are pages devoted to his work with the government and as a vigilante, with the clear purpose of showing his steadily increasing detachment from humanity. This is where the director's and author's intentions clearly differ. Moore's goal is to showcase how Dr. Manhattan slowly drifted away from humanity and allowed his indifference towards the fate of man to take over. This allows for a more clear-cut comic book hero, with his main weakness being the fact that he simply does not care about society. On the other hand, Snyder is more interested in developing John as a character that the audience can deeply relate to, so that when he transforms into Dr. Manhattan, 
we are presented with an almost immediately strong contrast, as if Manhattan is only a husk of the man he used to be, even with his now limitless power. She's aging more noticeably every day. While I am standing still, I prefer the stillness here. I am tired of Earth, these people. I'm tired of being caught in the tangle of their lives. Moore also addresses the abstract idea of being conscious of the past, present, and future all at once through Dr. Manhattan. The biggest reason he is able to do this is through an affordance of comics that movies aren't granted. The ability to focus on only one specific instance for an unspecified amount of time. In the comic, Dr. Manhattan meditates on Mars while observing time from a non-linear perspective. He views the past, present, and future as they all happen simultaneously. Thanks to the fact that this is a comic, the reader can take their time analyzing each panel, respecting and understanding Manhattan's seemingly omniscient view of time. Replicating the same scene in a movie would not have the same desired effect on the viewer. Through the reader's ability to view multiple panels or scenes at once, it's easy to relate to Dr. Manhattan. Like him, we have the ability to be consciously aware of the events in past panels, the current panel, and even the panels to come just by flipping through the pages of a book. The movie adaptation was instead forced to reduce these pages of time theory from the comic into a short one-line scene with Manhattan looking up at the stars. They're so far away, and their light takes so long to reach us. All we ever see of stars are their old photographs. The movie cannot have the same effect on the audience. Yes, it can go scene by scene with each one depicting a new instance in time, but it can't display them all at once like the page of a comic book can. Snyder doesn't attempt the same fast-paced temporal shifts and instead reduces the movie equivalent of the scene into a series of simple flashbacks to Manhattan's life. David Barnes also notes how Snyder removes the final panel of falling gears from his movie adaptation. The gears represent the idea of creating meaning of jumbled parts, an important theme in the comic. However, this would have seemed out of place in the movie without the time jumps from the comic. Nonetheless, Snyder's removal of it has been criticized as the cutting of an important motif from the comic. Thus, we see how the affordances of a comic can allow more to discuss a more abstract idea which can't really be tackled the same way in a movie adaptation. Both the Watchmen movie and comic explore the passage of time utilizing their distinct affordances. Although many of the affordances given to the original comic cannot be translated directly to the big screen, Snyder also elegantly utilizes his own unique affordances to make the movie a masterpiece in its own right. While the comic explores deep temporal themes, the movie allows us to view a simpler adaptation of those themes through a more relatable linear view of time. The movie also gives us the ability to relate to the characters and literally hear their pain, suffering, and contrasting happiness. Although we can criticize the film medium for its inability to portray certain themes in the book, the same can be applied to the graphic novel as well. In actuality, it's realistic to expect moderate differences and view the movie as a separate entity with its own unique themes and emotions. We only have to keep in mind the affordances of each medium to truly appreciate the work of Moore and Snyder.